All right, I'm down here in Lakeland, Florida at Imperial Tropicals with Mike. How you doing, Mike? Hey, good. Hey, everyone. Um, so if you don't know about Imperial Tropicals, they are a fish farm here in Florida, and they are unique because unlike a lot of these fish farms, they actually sell direct to the public. So you can actually order fish from these guys, and I'll link to their website below. But um, real quick, Mike, if you can just give us quick like history and some info about this place and, and what you guys do here. Sure. Uh, so Imperial Tropicals, like Steve had said, was primarily a wholesale facility where we bred fish for distribution that went to pet shops. But the last probably 10, 15 years, a lot of independent stores have gone out of business and now most of what's left are chain stores. So a lot of the good fish market that used to be here is not there. So we started selling direct and we haven't looked back. It's It's been good. We love the fact that we're sending our fish straight to people's tanks and they're taking good care of them <clears throat> and they appreciate the quality that we send out but we specialize in all types of fish we breed central american fish south american fish african fish probably have about 200 different fish here that we breed at imperial tropicals so that's what we do is we breed fish tell me a little bit about this facility and we're going to show you guys all this stuff um, here in a minute but i know you got a bunch of ponds outside yeah so we have uh 20 acres of property that is primarily dedicated to fish and we have 157 outdoor ponds that are about 30,000 gallon each six greenhouses and these greenhouses they have concrete tanks in them we have about 600 of those concrete tanks they're about roughly 200 gallons a tank and then we have what three indoor buildings that are just stacked full of aquariums so we have lots of water and fish and tanks okay let's look at some fish this is vat room number three this is where we keep a lot of the african fish that we have for sale so let's go check some out you can't see the fish very well from the top so i'm going to net up some for you but we have turkish peacocks yellow blaze the mason eye uh, these are a pretty good size the, the mason and I are one of the most popular fish because they're one of the most colorful, but they are very aggressive. Sure. So we recommend uh, when people get the mason and I to keep them um, species only, you know, with just the mason and I. Like if you set up a 55 gallon tank and threw like 20 of these guys in it, right? You 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 know you have one of the nicest looking tanks out there, you know. And so that's the mason and I. I think we're sold out of the uh, sulfur head peacocks and the orange black lip blades. We're going to see if we have any big ones left. Might be one or two left. The orange black lip base is a new one that will be available later this summer. But it's uh, an incredible fish. And uh, we're getting. Uh, almost you know daily requests for these fish because um people know that we're breeding them right and then also uh the sulfur head peacock which is also another really nice one so yeah that is nice yeah those are just some extra males out of our breeding groups uh, i guess i can tell everybody how we filter these tanks we uh have these big sponge filters that we make in-house so it's like a big block of foam and then we have a pipe that goes through the middle of it that pulls the um, water into the sponge and then out the top. So that's how we, um, we filter our tanks. And, uh, we get asked that a lot, so I figure I'm going to show you. Uh, these are electric blue Texas cichlids. Kind of a, a new fish. One of the guys that was breeding the electric blue Jack Dempsey back in the day came up with this line. We don't know really how he um, made the line, but it's like a like a Texas Escondido, but it gets really blue uh, when it gets full grown. These are just kind of juvies right now. They don't have a lot of blue on them, but you can start seeing it come out on them. But as adults, I mean, they're just really bright blue. Got sunshine, peacocks, red shoulder, peacocks, a line of sunshine, blue regal, lemon jades. These are nice. You can see these good from the top. This is the electric blue all these. One of my favorite hats because they uh, 
not super aggressive like some of the other bigger apps. They don't get huge, so the collar on them are really popping. Aggressive. Like this is another colorful one here. This is the red Nairii. But the downside with this fish is it's super aggressive. So you can't really mix it with peacocks and haps because of the aggression level. We get people all the time asking, you know, hey, I want to get a red Nairii and put it in with my peacock hands. And we always tell them not to because of the, uh, the high aggression. That's one nice thing about the internet is the uh, information is out there. People do their research. I mean, we've had people that's only been keeping fish for like a year, and they're already like on a, such a high level of fish keeping, and it's because they've been watching good, informative videos about how to keep these fish, you know, properly, so you do have success. This is what the tanks look like when they're empty. pipes in there to help um, sure. lessen the aggression so they can they can hide if we're getting beat up. That's the dragon blood shame. Yeah those are so nice. I like it with the white in them. I think it makes the, I agree. the red pop. Um, they have some nice uh, star sapphires. It's just now starting to get chips, but this is another one that's really, really popular. But everybody wants them already chipped out. Actually, I think the big ones are in this thing. And it takes a long time to get them chipped out, and when we do get them chipped, they sell so fast that we never even get them up on the website. But what I tell people is, you know, your best bet is to buy one at 3 inch and just throw it out, because then you get to watch the, the transformation, and that's, that's pretty cool to watch itself, you know. But a lot of people want them, you know, already with the chip, like, they just usually a little bit bigger than that they start getting chipped out but even when they don't have the um the sapphires on them they still look really nice like this one's starting to you see this starting to chip out a little bit but one of my favorites um i think when they're full grown with the star sapphires all over them i think they're one of the nicest looking fish so this is a like an import room for us. We've been bringing in a lot of uh, really cool fish from different breeders overseas. So like we have a, a friend in Indonesia that actually goes to Papua New Guinea and collects rainbow fish. So he's got some really outstanding rainbows. Of course, these are the Blair rainbows. Um, this is a new one to us called the Prices Rainbow. And they're just now getting color but a spectacular fish if you google it google prices rainbow and it's just a phenomenal looking rainbow fish same thing with these wapagas this is another new one and you can see that metal starting to color up right there and they're just a phenomenal looking fish and these are rainbow fish that are not very common in the u.s so we're uh, we're super excited about getting some of these guys going one downside is when we bring in these rainbows, they're small, they don't have color. But what we do is we grow them up until they have color. 
and then we start selling them. And then we can also take good pictures of the fish. These Millennium Rainbows are ours, but uh, those are not imported. But again, you can see the, um, the quality of them. They're really nice. They're a little bit difficult to ship, which all rainbow fish are because they're, they just stress out. They're, they're a high oxygen, high energy fish that they don't like being confined to a bag, but we still are able to ship these fish successfully all over the country with, with very few issues. Uh, some new tetras that we got. This is a phoenix tetra. We're growing them out because they don't have a lot of color this size, but when they get a little bit bigger, they look phenomenal. This is one of my favorite. This is a super blue carry tetra. And I know it doesn't have lighting on the tank. I'm hoping that they can see the color on them, but they're really, really nice. So that's another one. We're actually going to we're growing some of these up for breeders. So we're going to breed them. Cardinal tetras on the bottom, those are really nice. In fact, um, I've got a really good supplier of these guys now, and they're just phenomenal. We, uh, we haven't had any issues with them. Cardinals could be a little bit sensitive, uh, so we're happy that we're able to find some tank raised ones that are holding up really nice. Next to us, we got the Albino Millenniums. This is another one that we have a hard time keeping in stock because they're so popular. Um, it's, you know, just a uh, it's a little bit more difficult fish to breed. The fry are really tiny, and you have to really make up some really small cultures to be able to feed them, like green water type stuff. All right, so this is our breeding room. This is the new room that we're working on. So right here, we've got 40 gallon tanks. We just built the racks. We just put the tanks in yesterday. Uh, we're going to plumb all of it. Uh, tomorrow, and maybe not all of it. We're going to start on it tomorrow, but it's going to—it's a big, big rack. Uh, total, I want to say we got 48, 40 gallon breeders on this row right here. Um, and what this is going to give us is, it's going to give us a lot more tank space to breed really cool fish in. And a lot of our tanks are 20 gallons and 30 gallon tanks, and we really like the 40 gallon tanks because you could do a lot of you know, uh, a little bit bigger fish in them. You could do group breeding in them. It's going to be really cool. So we're super excited. Uh, we went all the way down the left side and we're also redoing the walls. Uh, we're putting uh, foam insulation on the walls. This will help in the winter time when it gets cold to um, keep the tanks at constant temperature. Uh, but as you can see, we've got some old systems down here. We're going to take all this stuff out and do another row of like 125s and then we'll probably do a row of like 20s and then we'll probably do a row of 10s for fry. But by the time we get done, this room's going to be temped out. <laughs> it's going to be nice. Yeah. That's one reason I like traveling the country to all these different fish rooms is I get ideas on how other people were successful, you know, maintaining their fish rooms and building their fish rooms. and. That's one thing I do a lot of, is I tour a lot of fish rooms, you know. Some more discus growing out. Got some rummy nose tetras in there growing out. Some pongos. This is a really cool fish. Um, this is a Therictes Nickleys. It's a fish that's extinct in the wild. So like, it's no longer found in the wild. And see that one like right there really collared up but it's a uh, it's a fish that it's pretty rare can't can't find it we had a professor at one of the universities that uh, was doing a research you know paper on this and basically he asked us to read it and disperse it into the hobby and I told him I'd love to do that so so we're growing these guys up we really need to get them in a bigger bigger tank though because uh, they still get you know it's an eight ten inch fish probably that full moon. But a really nice fish. Cool. Got a pair of discus there. Alright so we're out out in the field right now. This is one of our grow out ponds. Um, this has got the dragon blood peacocks in it. 
So it's starting to rain a little bit, but we still should, um, you should still be able to see them come up and feed. And they should come up to the surface here pretty soon, but I don't know how well it's showing up on camera. There you go. Yeah, you can see them. Yeah. They do really well in the ponds. Um, this pond's about 30,000 gallons, and so it's got plenty of, you know, volume. But what really they benefit from is the live foods, like the mosquito larva in particular. In right. Florida, we have a ton of mosquitoes. So these guys are getting every day a steady diet of mosquito larva and other types of small, you know, bugs that they're eating whether it's dragonfly larvae or glass worms. There's all types of little microorganisms that they're feeding on. So they get a really good diet. And I think that's the key to growing good fish is a good diet and having an adequate environment to grow them in. And we have 157 of these ponds, so. Pretty awesome. Yeah. This is the net that we used to bring them in with right here. The net is uh, 30 feet long and four feet in depth. And what we'll do is we'll pump the ponds down about you know halfway, and then we'll drag the net and catch them up. Um, it's a it's a it's a good way to catch them. Um, I've tried other methods, but this seems to be the the best. It's all pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, thanks, Mike. I appreciate you taking us around and, uh, and show us everything. And again, yeah. guys, um, you can buy fish from these guys, Imperial Tropicals. I'll link it down in the description. Uh, be sure to check them out. Cool. Good people, good fish. Thank you.